Good afternoon, uh, good morning, or good evening even, um, depending upon where you are. Welcome to another live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, if you could just type a Y in the chat box, if you can um, see the Tickmill um, welcome screen and you can hear my audio clearly. Good stuff, thank you. Okay, let's uh, let's just get, uh, get going here then. Um, first and foremost, obviously, want to pay attention as always to the risk disclaimer as we know trading any financial instrument has, uh, has a high level of risk attached to it equally important is that um, any of the views expressed here today are mine and they are not representative of uh, investment advice and or the views held by Tickmill. Um, before we jump into into today's discussion uh, just a brief overview of my background for those who are joining us for the first time today. Uh, after graduating, I uh, went into um, consulting in, in London, um, then moved <coughs> out of the comforts of a uh, public limited company and, um, and did a startup, a consulting startup that experienced some pretty rapid growth. And after uh, Four or five years, I cashed in my my stake in that business uh, via a merger, and then I um, I went on to explore my passion for markets. I had um, had some time on my hands and some chips to play with, and uh, and started to meddle. Really, is how I refer to it in the um, in the markets, uh, specifically day trading, the S and P 500. Uh, market was predominantly trending north. I experienced some um, some initial gains and then really made some quite substantial gains. But as it's often the case with, uh, with beginner's luck, it ran out, and um, and I ultimately gave back all the gains and then some um, to the point that I experienced a uh, six-figure loss, which uh, was devastating. Certainly, it uh, fortunately wasn't terminal, and so I had to step back from from what I was doing. And, uh, and reconsider um, what I was, how I was going to approach the markets. And I had to get serious about it as a commercial endeavor. And as such, I sought out a mentor who demonstrated excellence in, in the field of trading. Um, I worked with him for uh, 18 months, to two years, and, um, and basically set about um, developing my mental skills and also my tech my mental skills most importantly but also enhance my technical understanding and um and then developed a uh, a, a trading plan a business plan uh, extensively back tested and forward tested and ultimately came back to the markets in 2008 um in a, in, a, in an environment not dissimilar to, to what we've witnessed uh, over the previous uh, over the past few weeks um and since then, on, a, on an annual basis, I've, uh, I've managed to um, deliver consistently profitable returns. And I, I refer to the, the, the annual returns as really they're the, the metric that I, I pay most attention to on the screen. You can see uh, my monthly performance. Uh, the reason it starts from 2013 is that um, that was when I started my managed account service, started with friends and family, and it's grown organically from there to, to now being a multi-million dollar um, portfolio um, and like I say the, the my focus is on is on my annual returns um, I'm not concerned about the outcome of the next trade or the next string of trades really um, it's about the next hundred trades for me um, because I know that if I adhere to my trading plan and execute uh, execute that plan with, with excellence then that will deliver um, my, my, my edge, my edge will demonstrate itself over that time, and that's what it's proven to do um, consistently. So, uh, you know, for me, trading is really about being laser focused on the process and um, and not 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 being concerned by by the outcomes. Um, most of my trading now is, is an end of day activity for me, and um, and the majority of the trade management is is automated. So I have a bunch of time on my hands. I still want to keep my my finger on the pulse of the markets. And so I have two, a couple of other additional projects that I'm involved in. One is I'm the resident market expert, obviously for Tickmill. I provide daily 
uh, market analysis and, um, and trade setups that I'm tracking. You can subscribe to that through the Tickmore blog site. And I'm also the head of trading and trader education at a firm called FX Career Swap. Um, it's a project we started last year designed to really um, help emerging retail trading talent overcome what is the biggest, uh, the biggest hurdle that any, any retail trader actually faces. And once you've got a level of education and you have a, a proven strategy in place, the big problem that, um, that, that retail traders face is capitalization. Because you can have an excellent plan and you can execute that plan. And if you're adhering to, to pro pro um, professional risk management um, standards, uh, you, you know, and if you're returning, let's say, somewhere between 30 and 50 percent a year, which is, um, which is a, certainly a, a solid and, and significant um, gains, then if you're only trading a thousand pound account, that's not going to move the needle in terms of financial return. And so what happens with retail traders is they, they experience some, uh, some success with their strategy, but they get frustrated by the, the, the lack of financial gain and ultimately end up overstretching with respect to their, their trade size. And they experience a, 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 what is you know, a normal drawdown, but because they've over leveraged or, they've, or the position size is too big, it ultimately wipes out their accounts. And so what we're looking to do with FX Career Swap is uh, support you uh, through the learning process and, and demonstrate proven strategies to you that you can then implement yourself or combinations of. But ultimately, what it leads to is a funded account that you have the ability to grow over time uh, with those professional risk management metrics in place. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can contact me through uh, LinkedIn. Or, um, or you can reach out to the guys through the website at fxcareerswap.com. Right, moving on to today's discussion. A couple of things I want to talk about um, before I jump into some charts. Um, one is this idea of, of month-end flows. Um, for those who uh, are less experienced in the market, it's a, it's a market phenomenon that you might not be aware of, but it's certainly one that, uh, that impacts the market. On the screen here, you can see <laughs> a couple of notes that I've shared with my the, my FX Career Swap trading team around this month end flow, and particularly in the idea of the of the month end rebalancing, um, which is is basically related to large portfolio managers having to um, rebalance their portfolios depending upon the equity performance. And so we have obviously seen a significant um, rise in in U.S. equities. Um, from that March low, and that's created a, um, a signal that comes well above the historical standard deviations um, for these month-end signals. And what it represents today is a very strong US dollar sell signal, and, um, and we're seeing the dollar under some pressure at the moment, but watch it this afternoon once we get through the ECB um, meeting. You certainly want to uh, if you've got positions on, make sure you've got your stops in place around 4 p.m. UK time, because that's when we often see this significant volatility based around um, these, these month-end flows. And more often than not, we can see some very sharp moves that equally more often than not tend to be quickly reversed. But certainly you want to be cognizant of these, these flow dynamics as we head into the, the four o'clock hour today in the UK. Um, so we're seeing a, a very strong uh, US dollar sell signal um, by US investors on foreign, foreign assets. So um, that's a, a flow dynamic I, I just wanted to alert you to for, um, for today. Next um, dynamic I want to, to make you aware of, and for those who have been um, joining these sessions regularly, you'll be aware that I, I pay attention to, or certainly I want to be cognizant of, the seasonal flows in markets and seasonal trends. And what we know now coming into to May um, is that the dollar tends to have a significant outperformance. Actually, more uh, over the past 10 years, May has been the best month of the year for the dollar and equally the worst for the Australian dollar, the British pound, uh, the euro, um, the New Zealand dollar. Um, so I want to be paying attention to this Idea, especially as we've seen 
um, the dollar have uh, tracked lower during April, as is the case, as the, you know, the dollar um, historically over the past 10 years has tended to perform pretty badly um, during April. I'm certainly going to be paying attention to these um, to these currencies now as we go into May. Uh, if I can, if I get sell signals from my strategy, then I'm probably going to look to try and ride these trades to try and um, to try and take advantage of um, the potential seasonal impact as well of of, um, of the flows in the market. So. Um, Dollar index is going is is, is, is as you know uh, on over a longer over the longer term horizon from my perspective um, likely to demonstrate some weakness um, based upon the huge amount of liquidity that's being um, provided to the market uh, through the through the Fed. I won't uh, I won't bore you again with all the charts, but you know this represents <coughs> this chart here shows you the significant amount of of um, Dollar liquidity that's being provided, and the likelihood that um, that there is, through this lag period at the moment, we ultimately should see um, dollar weakness. And this this is the uh, broad, the, the bigger term cycles that we see in in terms of the dollar. And you can see that we are stretched to the upside at the moment from a cycle perspective. Goldman Sachs 16-year cycles also highlights um, the potential that we could be in for a turn in the dollar. Um, that said, if we look at now at the most recent CFTC positioning data, we can also see that um, there has been a turn in dollar positioning um, from the CFTC report. Um, whilst, this is, whilst this initial turn has occurred um, and the, the aggregate is, is a bearish, it's certainly not at this stage um, considered to be in the extreme. So what this would suggest to me, the data that, that I'm seeing here, is that um, the dollar is the dollar move is 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 in the offing. The people are putting positions in play for a broader move. That doesn't necessarily mean that um, we're going to witness uh, the, the turn straight away. Oftentimes, what we'll see is when positioning starts to flip from being bullish to bearish, in, in this instance with the, um, with the dollar, we often see a position shake out before we see the real move. And what I, well, mentally, at where I'm at at this stage is, we could see that shake out come during May because we have that seasonal trend support um, from, a, from the seasonality perspective, and we've just got these nascent dollar short positions in play. So what more often than not, what we see is a squeeze of those before then we see um, a more sustained move. So let's jump into to some of the charts now. What I want to do first of all today is look at the monthly charts as, uh, as, <coughs> as we're coming into month end. It's always good to um, pay attention to these bigger charts, bigger timeframes, often, uh, retail traders fail to be, be cognizant of these, these higher time frames and certainly these higher time frame charts give the perspective of where the bigger moves are likely to come in the market and so from this dollar index we are testing again the trend line and depending upon where we close today and factoring in the um, the month end flow dynamic we could uh, we can reasonably expect uh, the potential for a weak close here that's going to see a double rejection of this trend line that's been in play uh, <coughs> as well as a double top here at the 161 extension of this structure here from the lows of this cycle so we're, we're again we're trading at a, a pivotal level here for the dollar um, and we we look to be on track for a weak close here um, today now that doesn't that because we're looking at the monthly chart here. That doesn't mean that we can't see some back and filling again um, during May with the dollar in terms of some some strength. But ultimately, the higher time frame here is suggesting that we can see um, see some sustained weakness in the dollar index. And um, as many of you know, I'm looking for a move certainly back into these low 90s. Um, to play out in time as that liquidity um, issue uh, starts to take hold and we see a, a real shift in terms of positioning. Let's, uh, let's check in with gold here. Gold testing the 78.6% retracement of the um, 
of the 2011 down to 2015 lows. And we're struggling to get a close above there. We'll see um, today if we do get uh, if we do get a close through there, <coughs> then um, the ultimate objective will be a, a retest of these uh, of these 2011 highs. Um, but at this stage, we're, we're finding resistance at, um, at the 78.6% retracement. Um, but I'll look shortly, I'll, uh, I'll show you the, the daily chart there and look at the, the actual structure I'm watching. Um, Euro obviously trades the inverse to, um, to the dollar index. And so we're at this major trend line support again. And, um, and it looks like <coughs> at the moment that we're going to uh, potentially hold this. Obviously, we've got the ECB, the ECB. I've just uh, released their interest rates and their, um, their deposit rates unchanged. So if the euro can um, can defend this trend line again, and we've also got the euro at the um, equality objective from the uh, the all-time highs here at 160 into the um, into that initial reaction low at um, on, uh, June 2010, and then the pullback. And so we've got this equality objective that continues to find or, or attract support um, at this 107.55 area. So again, if we're thinking in terms of the dollar index um, <coughs> rolling over, then um, certainly want to be paying attention to the close here in the euro. The close back above 110 would, uh, would be a, a bullish reversal on the month. And so uh, I want to pay attention at that 4 p.m. 4 p.m. And then at the New York close tonight to see where this see what this candle looks like. But certainly, um, again, similar to similar to the idea of the the dollar index demonstrating some strength during May, we can back and fill here. But the whilst we're holding this trend line, the the bias is going to be for um, for a move to the upside. Sterling, <coughs> similar story. We've. Uh, We've tested, we've had multiple tests now at this 119, 120 area, and it's attracted buyers, and we're holding that trend line support on a closing basis. So if we can get a, a close, if we can take out this, um, this descending trend line here, then there's plenty of scope for upside in terms of sterling. Um, so we'll see where we close there. Dollar yen. <coughs> Um, dollar yen still in terms of the the biggest the bigger picture cycle we have a target down here at 92.20 um, we can see this is a just a standard pitchfork here we have held um, that 100 level support uh, time and time again but you can see these monthly candles here and these tails rejecting that 112 area looks like we're probably going to close pretty bearish here in terms of the the yen so again <laughs> on the in on, on the trading time frame for me the trading time frame is the daily chart we can see back and filling but the ultimate trend at this stage should be lower in uh, in the dollar yen <clears throat> Aussie has seen uh, another major reversal from that 78.6 percent 61 handle and um, whilst whilst we again one, when I move on to the daily chart, the, the Aussie is uh, is a, a setup that I'm watching very closely for a for a trading position in terms of uh, playing it from the short side in the in the near term. But certainly the bigger picture here at the moment is starting to look pretty constructive for the Aussie as we defend this 60 handle and um, and in time. And again, if we if we factor in the, the <coughs> what we believe is going to happen to the dollar in the dollar index, then we should see higher prices in the Aussie over the over the uh, coming months. Uh, the dolly, uh, the loonie has, has basically topped out at that 78.6% retracement as well, double top. <coughs> Key reversal on the monthly here. You can see that, um, that we failed to, to get a close above, um, above this 140.75 area. And so whilst that continues to, to re be the, the key line in the sand on a monthly basis, then we can expect a, um, a certainly a, a significant correction to occur here. And if we bring in this, this trend line, right, so, <clears throat> you know, we can be back down testing 135 or even the trend line support into the 130 area. Again, over the coming months, I really anticipate that even though we get a, a likely very weak close here, that we'll see some back and filling before we get uh, before we get the, the big move down. Um, 
the Swissy <coughs> continues to trade in a, in a pretty well-defined range, really, the 91 um, to uh, parity level, and um, not really a whole, uh, whole bunch of action in there. Obviously, you've got the Swiss National Bank heavily involved in terms of uh, defending the uh, Swissy, but note the tails here that we're seeing at this 98 area that uh, on, a month, on a closing basis, we're certainly rejecting uh, higher prices at the moment and anticipate we could uh, we could trade lower and I'll uh, show you a setup that I'm <coughs> a trade that I'm currently in actually in the Swiss League. Kiwi <coughs> defending this uh, this trend line on a closing basis now, um, looking at a bullish reversal here in the Kiwi and certainly again expect some back and filling. But whilst we hold this 59.60 area. Again, we can expect higher prices in the Kiwi over the coming months. Uh, the S&P has obviously staged a huge uh, reversal. Didn't take out the, uh, the, the bullish trend line um, from the 2009 lows. But again, um, whilst, the, whilst the, certainly we've seen some, some significant strength, I see opportunities on the, uh, the short side on a tactical basis in terms of the, um, the S&P that we'll look at in a minute. <coughs> Crude oil tested the major equidistant swing objective at zero. We actually traded negative, obviously, in the futures. But again, we've seen pretty sharp, uh, sharp reversal here in crude oil. And certainly now, in terms of these economies being brought back online, uh, there is the potential that we, we see some, su some sustained upside in crude oil um, as, we, as we moved into this phased reopening of, of economies around the world. So that's going to be a story that's going to drive the potential for crude oil demand. Uh, one last one I want to take a look at is the Singapore dollar. We, um, again, can't get a close above this uh, 142 handle, and uh, this one's started, starting to look bearish. And uh, I actually posted this on the, uh, the Ticknell the blog um, earlier this week as a, as a setup that, um, that looks to be working. Again, we can back and fill here, um, but ultimately the direction of travel looks to be to uh, to the downside in the Singapore dollar. So those are the big <laughs> the big picture perspective. Um, and so the, the key takeaway from that is that I'm you know I'm, I'm anticipating the potential for um, for dollar weakness over uh, over the coming months but certainly from a tactical trading perspective I'm seeing opportunities to 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 buy some dollars, to be long dollars at the moment. And one of the um, key charts I'm watching is, uh, is this Australian dollar. We have, uh, we have a target on the Australian dollar and a quality target versus this, uh, this swing low at the 68, uh, 66.80 area. Um, and we have some further equality into, uh, into this area. We also have, um, if we look at the fib retracement from the high here, we have the 78.6% retracement. So if we can get a pop here up into this um, 66.50, 67 handle, and I'm certainly going to be watching for um, bearish reversal patterns, We're starting to build in some divergence here in terms of the momentum studies as well. So really paying close attention to uh, to any move towards the 67 handle and i'll be watching for uh, for a reversal uh, as per the strategy to to get in on the short side and in terms of targets well <clears throat> it's perfectly reasonable to expect a 50 percent retracement so back into that 61 area that, that i just referenced on the um on the, the monthly time frame so we could you know, we can still get a pullback like this, which, you know, from a trading perspective, would certainly tick all the boxes in terms of risk reward. And even then, it's still bullish because, I mean, if that decline plays out during May, we know that the dollar has uh, is likely to experience some strength during May, then it sets up the next leg higher um, in terms of the opportunity to play in on that longer term um, dollar weakness story. So even though this is, you know, this tactically is a great trade setup and one I'm going to be monitoring, it still leaves us with the potential then to uh, to join into that that dollar weakness story at uh, a 
better prices. So this is one that I'm certainly paying uh, paying attention to. Um, the euro, I'm, uh, I'm currently long the euro uh, versus the signal that I got down here. Um, we also had uh, multiple confirmations um, with one of our strategies, the pin bar continuation strategy. On the weekly, we got a signal, and I've been uh, I've been playing that, I've been playing it in and out of the market, so trading around that. <coughs> it was uh, long the Australian dollar, close that out um, this week, and now I'm I've still got the euro part of that trade working, and um, and I'm long. And what I'm looking for here is um, let me just remove rulings. If we the first, first area that I'm watching for a test of is the symmetry swing objective at this 109.50. So again, I want to pay close attention as we trade into this area. We're likely to be moving into um, the resistance bands, the, <coughs> the VWAP resistance area, and um, we've got the, the monthly VWAP here, all of this one. <coughs> One uh, one oh nine fifty to one ten area. So I'll be watching how price responds here because, as we know, um, we may see another bout of uh, of dollar strength, which could still have us trade lower um, and retest this this prior support, the one oh six thirty area. But at the moment, I'm long and um, looking for a test of that one oh nine fifty, and then we'll see how price responds here as to whether or not I'll uh, I'll be looking at reversing that position now. If we if we take out the 110 on a closing basis, then we have other upside objectives. <coughs> we have this symmetry swing. So this gives us a target up at this 112, and that's basically looking for an equality move from here versus what we saw in the uh, the late March runner in the euro. And again, once we get into this area, if we see it, 112.50, <coughs> then I'll be, again, watching the price action very closely because we could, uh, from there, see a sell signal that, um, that would take us meaningfully lower. Um, but certainly looking for some strength here, especially into today's close. And uh, we'll see where, where we can close. Obviously, we've had the ECB decision out and um, Lagarde will be uh, holding a press conference shortly. So we'll see how this plays out, but um, it's a risk-free trade for me now. I've got some targets that I'm eyeing. I'll be watching for uh, for how the market responds as we trade into those areas. Um, another one that I'm looking at <clears throat> is this Euro-Yen. Uh, looking to see if we can get a close above this descending trend line here. And um, I see an opportunity. I posted this. This is on the Tipner blog today. You can read the, the thesis behind that. But um, what I'm looking for would be an initial move to test the symmetry swing resistance at 118. And if we can get a close through there, um, then we can see the next or the primary symmetry, symmetry swing resistance up at 120. But to be honest with you, looking at the chart of the euro yen at the moment, I, I think we'll probably have. Uh, probably see some selling at its 118. And I think what we could do is actually trade down and make another low. Um, we'll see how price responds at that area. But I think we could be looking to complete this cycle. So if we trade up into here, sellers step in and um, we get a, a sell signal, then um, we could see this move down into this 113, which is the 161 extension of this last uh, last move to the upside. So I'm um, paying attention to price action as we trade into these, these key areas. Um, the other trade that I've got on at the moment is the Swissy. So we, um, we've taken out, the, taken out the major trend line that we've been um, running against. We've got this uh, reaction, <coughs> secondary lower high here in the Swissy. And that leaves a target open down at this 94 handle. Um, slight fly in the ointment with this one is that we've, uh, you know, the Swiss National Bank are pretty actively defending the Euro Swiss at the moment at the 105 handle. Um, but we're seeing some weakness today. We'll see if this, this is going to roll over and make, make new lows. There are some big options uh, structures in place down at, down at 103. So we could, uh, we could have a battle on our hands there um, between the market and the SMB. But um, got to stop now just above yesterday's high so from a risk reward perspective this this has always stacks up 
um, giving it 4.79. And we'll just see, you know, who knows, maybe this reverses and <clears throat> we stopped out and then we're looking, you know, at the next setup in the Swissy, um, which for me would be a move into <coughs> this big double top and descending trend line um, versus this broader channel. The reason why I put this one on is that we've taken out this trend line and we're also holding uh, trend line resistance with the momentum study here. So we'll see how this uh, we'll see how this goes. Like I say, not concerned the outcome of individual trades as such. Um, and then the final one I want to take a look at today is these uh, these futures, these S&Ps. We're actually back up retesting the yearly pivot now from below. We're seeing a bit of resistance here. <laughs> We've come a long way in a short period of time. We're also trading into this uh, trend line on the momentum study, the psych indicator. So if we can if we're going to close back below 28.90 today, the, the near-term VWAP, we could be in for uh, for another correction here. And as always, we target the symmetry swing move. So uh, certainly the scope down to 27.70, and then we'll see how the market uh, how the market plays plays it from here. Because ultimately, and similar to the, the Aussie idea of that 161 extension and 78.6% FIB retracement, you know, we could see this type of move up here um, from this support area. And, and again, like the Aussie, then we could see, you know, 50% retracement easily um, before potentially then, you know, who knows what, what the news flow is going to be. Obviously, this Gilead uh, trial has gone pretty well, and that's uh, that's did yesterday at least give the market some support. but still see a big big retracement here um, whether or not we're going to revisit these lows is uh is something we'll have to watch in time um but certainly i'd be watching uh, any close back below this 2890 would um would be concerning in the near term for bulls and i think we could see a, a deeper decline back to this initially i'd be targeting a move back to 27 17 symmetry swing support and see how we see how we play it from there um so those are some of the markets i'm watching and some of the opportunities and, and trades I'm in, and, uh, and my perspective certainly uh, for this for this dollar as we uh, as we head into the um, summer months. Are there any questions, guys, with respect to any of the charts, or would anyone like to um, like, like to look at a chart that I haven't reviewed in this session? You could just type the charts into the the chat, and I'll uh, I'll pull it up if you uh, if you have a chart that you'd like me to take a look at. If, there are, if you don't have a question, it would be helpful for me if you just type a, an N in the chat box so that I know that, uh, one, you're awake, you're awake, and two, um, if I can wrap this uh, wrap the session up here. Good stuff. Well, thanks very much for your time today, and, uh, and I hope this has been helpful. Take care, and I'll see you sometime next week.